Ed's dream, which is, you know, another 20 minute discussion right there. But so what happens when you're faced with a reality that you don't exist? Do you continue to live on and become a god and you're all powerful because you're lucid dreaming, yeah. essentially? Um, or are you so logical and intelligent that you're like, well, I don't exist, so I can't possibly yeah, still it seems like part. So then you zero yeah, sum like and they vanish can't and handle the contradiction. Because to, to both, to both, like, so for Vivek achieving Kim, it's like he could both go, I'm just part of this Godhead's dream, but then at the same time, contradictory, he has to be able to be like, I am me still. I'm still, uh, you, know, you know what I mean? So, you know, and, and for someone that's so, uh, you know, the Dwemer being so logical and they're like, they need this perfect framework and everything needs to make sense, that, yeah, they zero sum. There are, okay, there are, look, there are some flaws with that idea because I, I usually uh, that's usually what I lent to before but um, and it's still plausible um, but the thing is there's um, with the zero summing like how like so obvious well I mean obviously only some of them had that like so the idea was that they all reach that divinity moment or something with the, with a hard lock on the activation of the medium the medium um, that simultaneously all of them kind of got that understanding. The idea was that it was because of that like telepathic feeling, the calling, right? Um, but ESO has elaborated on that further where they've basically that the calling is not an innate telepathic ability, that it's like essentially like it's a, a phone. It's headset, a helmet. You know, like, <laughs> it, like, like what Michael's wearing right now is just this is what Dwemer had and they're communicating like, like us. And that's so, you know, they hop on Skype and they're like having a conversation. Didn't didn't Drew say that DJ Kagranak dropped a remix that was <laughs> yeah. so lit the entire race disappeared? Yeah. That's my that's my take. And then and that would explain why two that would explain two things why Jaeger and Bagan didn't because he wasn't he wasn't he didn't join the call, so he because he was off in oblivion, <laughs> he didn't have reception. <laughs> and then the go because another thing they point to is the ghosts, but like the Dwemer who are ghosts are dead already like you know what i mean they can die before they could have died in the war or the, or the first council before that they all got together so their souls or consciousness are sort of like separate from you know they're not receiving the sky call that says so what you're so what you're saying is basically it only makes sense for people to disappear who are kind well, of yeah, aware of what's going on truth. so if they weren't based like it doesn't mean the whole race has to disappear for example you could come to this same conclusion you could achieve divinity through something and then you can't rationalize your existence but you could you could even have that you know and maybe at the same time i come to that conclusion maybe we both disappear but michael doesn't have to disappear then because yeah. he's just like well no but like but you're a human doesn't mean all humans have to disappear because you can't rationalize their existence does that make sense mm. i i guess what yeah. you're kind of saying is like unless this calling thing telepathically mind controls them all as well they don't all have to think the same way about the same experience like some some could disappear some couldn't and Sotha still actually has a quote. He says something like, don't think about why the Dwemer disappeared. Think about why not all of them did. Yeah. So, like, well, there, there is future hmm. Greymore ESO stuff. There's this time traveler dude, like a Thad Thaddeus Cosmo or something like that. Um, hmm. And it, it adds more time travel, like, we need to... So, so the whole time travel thing is another explanation, is that the Dwemer, either, they could either go forward or back in time. Right. Let's just assume they go forward, but the because then we haven't interacted with them and it doesn't like retroactively change the past either. But that is kind of that is on on theme with them. Like consider that the Numidium, their big god that they created, this giant brass golem, is like a time wrecking machine, and and in the future it's used multiple times to cause a lot of problems with the timeline. A giant time. It's like a time machine combined with a new. And. Um, so it would be on theme for them to have like time breaking, time traveling things like in this dragon break kind of thing that the Numidian, the Numidian does. It might like send them forward in future or back or, or, or whatever. So there is sort of like this, you, the whole like going forward or back in time is another kind of theory for them, which which fits. The other one is also that they just became, literally became the skin of the Numidian. So they, the Dwemer race as a whole sort of became 
part of the Numidium and made the Numidium what it is and, and be able to be used. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it kind of gets a little hard. I mean, feel free to tear this down because I'm only just thinking of this right now and I don't think it would work with the idea of ghosts not disappearing, but you can also draw a parallel to what happened when um, the tribunal, Amlexia, um, Sovacil and Vivek, channeled the heart of Lorcan is that they were punished by Azura, so then their whole race suffered something. But obviously they were told in advance, don't do that or I'll punish you essentially. Whereas you could almost think, oh, it, it was Kag Kagranak's great blasphemy punished by someone. And you know, you, you, it's hard to say who because, you know, Lorcan's a dead god, but like, you know, say for, ex for instance, he would have punished them. It would make sense why Yagran Bagan wouldn't be punished because He's not in the mortal realm, so he's not subject to the physics of disappearing from the mortal realm, for example. And it, and it kind of aligns with the idea of um, the Dunder being yeah, punished. Yeah, I see what you mean. But, but, um, but even then, it's pretty harsh to punish, you know, some random Dwemer fighting in the War of the Crag right now by, you know, Kagranak's doing something and, and you get punished for it. So it's a, that it's a would, that wouldn't be unusual for the Elder Scrolls universe. I mean, <laughs> yeah. some of the stuff's yeah, pretty true. intense and unfair. <laughs> That's the other thing where I throw in, I don't really buy necessarily the calling thing, like that they're all just hooked up on this like big Skype call because mm. Clan Rorkin has, you know, the and over in the Hammerfell side, want nothing to do with the with the ones that are over in uh, Resdane or or in Skyrim. I mean, they're obviously with things like the Ethereum Wars, they're not all like politically unified. So this idea that they're all like hopped up to, like into this big mind, and they've all got different goals as well. Like you know, they're all dealing with the War of the Crag kind of stuff. Like they're not, kind of not on the same like political wavelength as the ones that are dealing with the Chimera and Resdane. So it kind of seems, but then they also disappeared though. That's what's interesting. So I don't, I don't yeah. necessarily, and especially the idea that now they've expanded on it more, and then the the calling is just putting on a headset, calling kind of thing. It's like what they all put on a headset at one time, and they're like me 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 me, and then they all disappear. Like it kind of sounds a bit silly. So that, to me, maybe there is a bit more credence to that that it is some sort of chosen kind of punishment or something. But like, yeah, they, I don't There's know. There's also the idea that there was um. Or just the, the fact that there was ash found, like kind of these ash piles in one of the Dwemer ruins in Morrowind, in Tribunal. Um, but I'm not entirely sure it's related just because you don't really see it everywhere else. Like they all disappeared and then there's ash, but... I, I guess we, um, without going too off topic, just to sort of distinguish zero summing, like leaving remains would not be a very zero summing Kind of that's thing. what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. That's yeah. What I'm so saying. just, just so just proof of that for people is that how Dagoth Ur. Uh, so the idea is he's in the dreaming dream sleeve world and he's imagining himself as reality. When you kill him, he just disappears. There's nothing. There's, he's just gone because he's he's not he's not even dead. He's just non-existent. If it's a, there is a difference, you know what I mean? Like because he kind of never was real. That's a whack. Well, you can't you can't not bring up um, Arniel Gain from Skyrim. Yeah. I mean, when he starts tinkering around with Keening, he just vanishes to to nothing. Just whoop. There's another thing. But you can summon him as a ghost. Back. Correct. But then there's also so the Dwemer ghosts sold. around. So maybe there is like yeah. that. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of. It's like when you zero sum, your soul stays behind. It does, yeah. I, it's it, I don't it's know. one of those things, a mystery. I, I guess this is a good, like, we, I also want to reiterate to everyone that, like, there are no definitive answers. It's really hard. You can only base off probabilities and sort of evidence and stuff. Like, it's not, you just don't know. And, and it's really whatever the writers want to do, like, that will end up being. But at that, let's actually talk about um, the, the future. Thanks to you.